Well, hello, everybody. Uh, we are here today with a very, very good friend, uh, one of our best friends, uh, Caitlin Gray. And Caitlin um, has her own business and it's called Embodied Holistic Health. And Caitlin, how are you doing? Hi, you guys. I'm great. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, thank you for being with us in, on this uh, interview. And Caitlin, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? So, well, I, like Cesar said, I'm a health coach, um, an integrative nutrition health coach. So my focus is primarily helping people with autoimmune disease uh, learn how to manage their disease through um, holistic nutrition and different lifestyle practices and just coming into a really good relationship with themselves and their bodies. And then I love um, to dance salsa, to do some other forms of dance like hip hop and contemporary dance. I do a ton of yoga um, and even teach a bit of yoga. And then, yeah, I'm just, I'm into singing and taking singing lessons at the moment. So a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Living dead. <Denver. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> nice. So anyway, this uh, episode um, is going to be called Social Distancing. And uh, what we're going to talk to you about is how has this affected your your personal life um you know like why don't we start with you telling us first of all how has this affected you socially you know because we're calling it social distancing uh so please tell us a little bit about how has that affected you yeah um so i was living um with a roommate in a small apartment in capitol hill um but i decided being cooped up in the very small apartment for a few months might be kind of hard for both of us since both of us were working at home and there wasn't a lot of space. So I decided to um, move back in with my parents. Also because my mom, she's a therapist and her um, practice has been impacted by people losing their jobs. And so she's been losing some clients. So I wanted to be able to help them financially too if they needed it. Um, otherwise, I would say it's just been really strange to feel like I can't go and just see people. And I, my dad actually is kind of an essential worker. So he's out of the house every day working um, and is exposed to a lot of different people. So I think that adds another layer of just, I feel responsible to them to protect them and keep them safe by not seeing people and going out too much, but also like, um, I'm also aware that he could catch the virus and then I could be exposed and then I don't want to go, right. you know, expose other people as well. So right. just, there's a lot of, um, I don't know, grief, even like I went to the grocery store yesterday and it just felt really heavy. Um, and just also though, I think just seeing all the kindness around the world has been really like heartening and heartwarming. So they're different sides of the coin but it's been interesting right have you been able to do things like video chat with people much and like how has that changed or affected your socialization yes um so that's been actually kind of cool this week i did two zoom calls with women that i don't even really know one is somebody that i follow on instagram and she um created this like kind of hope float event where she had four different women from across the country give sort of mini sermons essentially on like how they're they're processing this time and what it's meant for them and how they feel um that their relationship with god has kind of been defining their experience but to be on a zoom call with all these women from around the world like Asia and you know Africa and all these places was really amazing um and then I did another event my old roommate who now lives in Milwaukee she has a friend that has an organization that supports girls around the world so we did this like event where we all picked our favorite poem and read our favorite poem um and that was really really beautiful just to feel like there are a lot of amazing people doing amazing things throughout the world that are thoughtful and that want to contribute even just 
or, or to focus on art even during this time. So that was really cool. And then of course, like I've gotten to connect with you guys and other friends and that's been really meaningful and have done a ton of live stream dance classes on Instagram that have like brought so much joy to me. There's one where there's like 6,000 people that join in and it's been really beautiful. So that's awesome. That's really yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. What an, an interesting way to connect with people that otherwise you may not be able to experience. Right. Yeah. That's, I think, then just seeing people's generosity and the way people, like, um, are creating this sort of support network and doing what they feel called to do has been really inspiring. And I'm so inspired by what you guys are doing. And so, yeah, I just think it's, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's got to be really hard you know, for you being a, a also a, a dancer like ourselves, you know, uh, because uh, for us, or for me at least, I think I haven't gone dancing in at least a month or almost a month. So do you remember when was the last time you went out dancing? Yeah, I feel like it was, well, I feel like it was in February. I know that I was sick a lot too for about a month from like the end of February through like the end of March basically um so yeah I think I didn't go out maybe I went out like the last weekend in February wow. or the first weekend in March yeah. but um that's why having these live stream dance classes even though they're not salsa like to just really get it into my body and be able to get out some energy and anxiety that way that's been really powerful but I really miss the connection and the community and um, I think it's really highlighted the importance for me of that in my life because I think prior to all this happening, life, you know, is just very busy and salsa is kind of a late night activity. So there were many times where I would make excuses and yeah. kind of be like, I don't think I'll go tonight. But this has really brought, you know, a lot of clarity to me that dance is something that's so vital to my spirit and that I really want to continue to make that a priority after or make that more of a priority after all of this yeah i agree yeah, yeah and, and what is crazy is that with everything going on with with the uh, coronavirus um so the the bachata team the dance team that, that we are on um because you know and i have been partners for at least four seasons with ecstasy I think, yeah. and then uh, you were my partner for a very short time a few years ago. Uh, you know, we performed at a at an Indian festival downtown, mm -hmm. and so with everything going on, you know, we're we're supposed to start our practices um, and now in April. You know, like mid April, um, but now with everything, we don't know when we're going to start. And so um, I was um, curious to see if you you know will be my partner for the next for the the next season and yeah. you, know, you sound like you're very interested and it would be really cool to to get back you know and, and being uh, dance partners again we just don't know when this is going to happen you know when we're going to be able to start practices and all of that and the congress I mean, the congress so many different things around gosh. this yeah i didn't even think about the congress yes i know it's so it's so wild and i think like I yeah, it's it's hard to really. It feels surreal, you know, because it feels like there isn't really a, an end in sight, yeah. um, or at least anytime soon. You know, I think we haven't really reached the the peak of you know of cases or spread or whatever. Um, so. It makes me sad, <laughs> and yeah, and I really hope that, yeah, I just really hope that soon we can all get back together and be together and be expressing ourselves creatively together and, you know, being able to express our care for one another in person. Yeah. I think that's so important. Yeah, absolutely. And so a question I have is, you know, I know you talked a little bit about, um, I'm not sure actually if you have, if we talked about this before or during the interview, but um, that the first couple of weeks 
were a little more challenging and now you're kind of figuring out outlets. So yeah. can you just talk about like what this has been for you emotionally? Um, yeah. Through this time? Yeah, I think, um, so when I was in my early 20s, I experienced a lot of like intense anxiety and panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And throughout the years, I've found things like meditation or yoga or even watching my caffeine intake or just the, the foods that I was eating, things to like regulate my nervous system mm -hmm. and kind of find a really good balance and equilibrium. But I feel like the first few weeks of kind of quarantine and all of that, my anxiety felt like it was spinning out of control. And I think, you know, I was kind of crying at the drop of a hat and feeling this hollow pit inside my stomach that I just could not, you know, move through my system. And, um, you know, I, I think I tried to acknowledge like this is normal and there is a lot of grief in this because this isn't normal, you know, and right. And it's something that's so much bigger than any, you know, one of us kind of, I think can, can conceptualize or understand and understand the full impact of. So also I think I'm somebody that's pretty sensitive to the suffering of other people and I think that was just really brought to the forefront and um it's hard to to not know how to necessarily like be of service in a in a way that is gonna make a difference during this time so I'm kind of trying to sort through that and figure that out but um but yeah it's been painful and I think also just like as an adult living with my parents, learning how to navigate those relationships and feeling like my own tendencies to maybe not be fully present or not react or respond in the best way, like that's become clear to me just because it's a heightened time of stress for everybody. So I've tried to be more cognizant of that, but yeah, I would say. That's hard interesting <laughs> yeah. yeah it's hard to know how to feel because we couldn't fathom being in this situation and no seeing the world go through this I mean and I know you mentioned some beautiful aspects of it and people um, reaching out and trying to help one another and connecting mm -hmm. worldwide and that is you know I mean it is beautiful and there are things that will come of this that will be amazing but the process is really hard i mean it's hard to to really accept it i think i think that mm -hmm. a lot of us are probably going through phases of grief you know in a way um and just kind of not knowing what to do <laughs> with ourselves in a sense you know and and that feeling like there's how can you serve others in this time when mm -hmm. our job is to be isolated our job is to yeah not be around people how do you help people you know exactly. it's hard but i do think that your business can be helpful in that mm -hmm. you know because you yeah. can you can do it in these contexts you know over over facetime or you know video or whatever um, yeah and being able to help people as well so yeah i know on instagram i offered you know 20 minute consults for free for people that are interested in you know, boosting their immune system. And um, so, yeah, I think I've tried to find a way to kind of use my knowledge that I've gained having dealt with autoimmunity and just, you know, really trying to take good care of myself. Mm -hmm. um, I want to use that knowledge to really support people through this time. So thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Caitlin, take us a little bit um, through your average days before, um, you know, we started finding out about the coronavirus when we were still, you know, okay to go out and socialize and work and all that. And then uh, tell us a little bit of how much has that changed and what ways, uh, right. if you don't mind, please. Yeah, definitely. So. Uh, prior to all this happening, I was living in Capitol Hill and my roommate was working in an office and 
had a puppy that I was kind of helping her with because I was working from home or coffee shop. So I would usually wake up and try to meditate and, you know, eat breakfast and all of that and then take the dog out and then I would go and do work on my business and um talk to various people you know do networking and um work with clients and then um you know go home and eat lunch and then try to work more on things and maybe go to yoga in the afternoon because I was really involved in my yoga studio and I've also um been uh, I'm, I'm preparing to audition at a particular studio. So I would work on that as well. Yeah. And then, um, and then I'd probably go to the grocery store or, you know, see friends or do whatever and make dinner. And then my roommate and I often would just like watch a show together. And, um, and now I think what's been difficult is, because for me especially, like it was super helpful to be able to go to a coffee shop and get out of the house and um, concentrate on the things that I needed to get accomplished. I feel like being at home, I, I feel like time goes by and I'm not even really sure what happened to it. And um, <laughs> I think especially because I'm kind of just also in the process of really building my business that's been it's been disorienting enough to have all of this happen but then to feel especially at a time when a lot of people are losing their jobs and suffering financially um knowing how to kind of navigate that and being able to figure out a way to really continue to 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 make money um and support myself doing health coaching, which I think, you know, now a lot more people probably are really focused on building, you know, a strong immune system and really taking care of their bodies and their minds and all those things. So it's just hard, I think, for a lot of people financially right now as well. So it's just, it's an interesting thing. Yeah. Um, and so day to day, now I'm trying to kind of establish a routine and I haven't been great about that, but I am really trying to like, um, meditate, journal, get outside, walk, do my different live stream dance videos or whatever, yoga throughout the day, and then really a lot time as well to work on my website, work on, you know, my newsletter and connecting with different people and, um, you know, trying to, trying to find clients too. So, yeah. And doing a lot of cooking, trying, it's been interesting. I used to go to the grocery store like every day and now I'm just going once a week. And that's kind of in a way great because I think I spend less money that way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I was out and about a lot. <laughs> what's that? Oh, I was out and about a lot before. Right. Yeah. Um, so what does the 20 minute consultation that you had mentioned what does that mean or what does that entail for people if they were interested in, in taking that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we would just kind of discuss how they're coping uh, in this current situation and just talk about what's been coming up for them and also how they're taking care of themselves, what kind of food they're eating, um, if they're drinking enough water, you know, are they getting exercise? Are they doing any form of mindfulness? It's kind of just me providing support and recommendations for people and giving them resources so that they can really um in the midst of a lot of emotional turmoil physically support their bodies and kind of decrease their uh their internal stress level by regulating blood sugar and making sure they're not releasing too much cortisol which is a stress hormone you know so that they're not experiencing um higher levels of inflammation, things like that. So just really giving people um, advice and resources and, and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So if there was like one piece of advice mm -hmm. uh, with people having to spend so much time at home and right. the stress of that and, you know, maybe not getting out quite as much, what would be like one thing 
overarching, you know, that you could tell people or, or recommend? Yeah. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind, and it's not necessarily diet related, but it's just to find something that brings you joy and to do that every day. Yeah. Because as much as food and exercise are incredibly important, you know, to our physiology, our emotional state really, really um, impacts the functioning of our body also. So I think just finding an outlet where people feel like they're they're expressing themselves and they're able to feel um a sense of release and excitement and joy whatever that might be you know some sort of creative outlet hopefully um or having you know conversation with a loved one or watching a movie or trying to draw or sing or play guitar like i'm trying to learn some new songs on guitar you know and then i think eating like eating meals that are nourishing is really important too. So um, trying as best as people can not to almost sabotage themselves. And I know sometimes it's important to like give ourselves space and allow ourselves to, to, to eat things that are comforting. But if you can also balance that with, okay, I'm going to have this thing that I love, but also I'm going to have, you know, some spinach in my smoothie or whatever, just so that you're getting the nutrients that you need to support yeah. um, your your body. And that supports your me- mental and emotional state as well and your brain. So, yeah, that's great. That's a good reminder. It's yeah. just a good reminder to, in this time, especially because I think it's easy to get bogged down or to get overwhelmed by, um, yeah. you know, the news of every, every day hearing these awful things that are going on or just feeling stuck or whatever, I think it's good to remember that. It's a good reminder to think like, okay, I need to, what's going to bring me joy today to help me mm-hmm. process this or help me get through this time? You know, that's mm-hmm. a good reminder. Yeah, thank you. I think it's been really helpful to me, you know, and I think I, I said something, I was talking to a phone on the phone, I was talking on the phone to a friend and said something about, you know, like, I think if you continue to, like, um, be courageous and take risks, even if that's, like, an emotional risk during this time, it's sort of, like, your world just continues to grow bigger and expand, and you see the beauty, and then you ask, like, how can I help and be a part of the solution instead of kind of... I think when we limit ourselves or say like this is I mean it is incredibly painful and the suffering is very real so I want to acknowledge that but if we're only focusing on those things I think I think our body our physiology like our mental emotional state we respond to that by um I think really shrinking and shirking and not really necessarily um being curious about how we might be creative and respond in a way to not only make our own lives better in this time, because we're, these are, our, our lives are still taking place. They're happening, you know, they're going on. So, um, yeah, but how can we also then help to create more peace and all of that in the world at large that needs that right now? So, yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, you know, with everything going on, we're also trying to figure out, you know, our next living situation. Yeah. You know, are we going to stay here or not? And I can only uh, imagine what some people are going through that may not have, you know, a couple of different options like like yeah. we have, you know, we might have. Um, and it's, it's crazy to think, you know, that we need to find a new place um you know hopefully soon we'll be able to to um find that and it's also crazy and kind of scary to to keep thinking about that especially with Erin you know being pregnant because Um, we would like if we're gonna move anywhere we would like to to be somewhere before the baby comes hopefully you know and just like you are living with your parents right now um you know and we have the support of her family who is uh, my family I know that and you know, if thing, things come to 
a very hard uh, reality, you know, we might also be moving with her parents. Right, right. Being so thankful that we have that option. Yeah. Right. You know. Yeah. And that's exactly, I think, how I'm trying to think about this too. It's like, gosh, there are a lot of people that don't have the resources, um, the support system, the family system, you know, community, food. So it's it's really counting our, our blessings and then, but also recognizing that there is still grief in that process too. And, and a lot of disappointment for, you know, how we imagined things would be and would go. And now we're really happy to navigate something yeah, that was never anticipated and it's, that's hard so yeah. I think everybody I don't I can't imagine that there's a single person that hasn't had to sacrifice in one way or another because of this you know and right. hopefully in the end that allows us to see things or appreciate things that we maybe wouldn't necessarily have thought enough about or as much about, but you know, that sacrifice can bring light to, yeah. um, to, to things and hopefully create, um, something good, you know, so totally, right. Yeah. It's just one day at a time, I guess is all we can really do right now. It really is one day at a time. Yeah. It's really, like I said before, so surreal. So, mm -hmm. so, so strange. It is. Yeah. So Caitlin, um, I want to ask you, uh, what would be the best way for people to reach out to you? And we're going to post uh, all of your handles uh, on the description. Okay. So if you can just tell us, um, how can people reach you the best? Oh, thank you so much. Um, so Caitlin at embodiedholistichealth.com is my email. So that's a great place to reach me. Or on Instagram, my page is embodied holistic health so feel free to reach out to me on there um facebook the same thing and yeah i would really love to to support anyone that needs some support in any way that i can you can also i mean you know for anybody that's interested even pray for people or you know just really offer emotional support the best that i can too as well as as um helping people to support themselves physically, so. Yeah, and also being a yoga instructor, um, are you doing any of that through, uh, through video call uh, platforms? So I haven't, but I've been considering <laughs> how I might do that. And um, yeah, so not yet, but if I do, I'll definitely make sure to post that information on my um, social media pages. So, awesome. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think it would be really fun to, to connect to people that way too. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, Caitlin, uh, we want to thank you so much for doing this interview with us. Uh, we appreciate it very, very much. And uh, we love you uh, so much too. And we're going to just uh, pray for, you know, for the well-being of you and your family. Thank and that things move along, you know, um, sooner than later for all of us. And the, that you are able to get back to your normal activities and, you know, helping people and connecting with your friends and your loved ones oh. uh, once again. Thank you. I love you both so much. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so inspired by you and your generosity and your, your like, intellect and wisdom and kindness. And I just think you're both incredible. So. Yes, thank you for what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, well, thank yeah, you so yeah. much for participating and being willing to share with others your experience. Um, and yeah, it's been really great chatting with you. Really great. I loved it. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. Um, that was Caitlin Gray once again with Embodied Holistic Health. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you so much for joining. Bye. Bye. <laughs>